Sir Ivan he used to help to run his family's banking business. The city is getting its groove on, courtesy of New York personality Sir Ivan. Sir Ivan is a waschechter milliardaire. Sir Ivan might namely as I super Sir Ivan, a bankier and part-time house artist. The man, the myth, the legendary Sir Ivan. It's really hard to describe him without any sort of, um, you know. Videos or I mean he's not really someone who could be described in words. You could talk about Ivan for a very long time and and uh, and not describe the the total being. He's a very multifaceted individual, I'd say. Sir Ivan is here to win, and there's nothing stopping him. He really wants to prove to everyone that he can do this. This is his dream. Peace Man developed from the transition I made from having worked 20 years in a commercial bank and having worn banker suits and walking with a briefcase and going to board meetings and things like that. I wanted to go from one extreme to the other. It was from banking to entertainment. And I had to do it quickly at the age of 45 and let the world know that I was entering the picture. you look at Ivan as a personality, then I think that he could do anything because I've met tens of thousands of people traveling around the world and I haven't met another Ivan. One day he asked me to design Sir Ivan logo and I started drawing a man wearing cape with peace sign in the back and flying. I called Ivan right away. I just got a great idea. This might change your life. And I, 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 I want to show you right now. So remember, I'll give you this paper and just remember it. A few months later, actually, he stopped wearing the cape. <laughs> yeah, he stopped wearing cape. And But actually, I just designed for logo. I didn't know he's going to really wear a cape and like everyday basis. Boxer, he made my idea to next level. You're listening to Vic Latino's Neighborhood right here at Long Island's Party Station, Party 105, and joining us live this morning in the studio, the one and only Sir Ivan. The music, the lyrics, the 60s. Where does the, the superhero Peace Man fit into all this, Sir Ivan? Once I started singing about peace and decided to start wearing peace capes. I don't know if you've seen the latest one. Mm, fabulous. <laughs> I but love it. The, uh, I need to get me one of those. <laughs> yeah, Every, everybody asked me for one. <laughs> I decided that the music was no longer going to be just about singing about peace, but that when I walk down the streets, when I'm on stage, uh, no matter where I go in the world, I'm going to wear the peace caves, and then people started calling me Peace Man. But this. Her Majesty. Her Majesty. <laughs> when I was a kid, not in my wildest imagination, not on any drug in the world, <laughs> would I have imagined that I would have nicknamed my mother the Queen of Erotica and that it would have stuck. <laughs> But then again, I think when she was my much younger mother, she wouldn't imagine that I was going to knight myself, that she was going to call me Sir Ivan, and that I was going to dress like a superhero. So, Mom, we're even. We're even. My mother, who first knew nothing about erotic art and didn't even know what it was, created her own World Erotic Art Museum so that she could share her newfound passion and love for erotic and sexual things with everybody. The museum actually wasn't my idea in the beginning. The collection had increased to such a size and value that it was a shame that nobody else would see it or benefit from it. So that gave me a validity to what I was doing. My mom put a couple of books together, coffee table books, 
that had photographs of all the art she had accumulated up until that time. But it wasn't heavily advertised, and it wasn't broadcast uh, in the New Jersey area where it might have gotten back to somebody at the bank. She has the name Miss Naomi. She left off the last name so people wouldn't put the association together and so it wouldn't cast a negative light, you know, or on my father. My husband thought that uh, for a woman to collect erotic art wasn't a proper thing and that it casts some sort of a reflection on one's background or behavior or, or lifestyle to want to do that. And he read into it more than it was. Oh! oh. <laughs> <laughs> the way it's balanced is unreal. Better leave it alone before my mother comes. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations. I'm going to have to increase your allowance. Why? So you can buy her a whole dress. <laughs> Mina is a very beautiful Japanese girl that I met almost 10 years ago. This is my favorite chair. I love to sit here. <laughs> Things are looking up, right? <laughs> Between her smile, her laugh, and her sex appeal, she lights up the place. She knows me better than anyone, and I know her better than anyone. Her libido equals mine, shall we say. He's the most fun guy, so I have lots of fun with him. I am so proud to have a mother that is so knowledgeable about the sexual history of the world. My friends are jealous. They said, I can't believe it. You can talk about sex with your mother. That's so cool. My mom would freak out. My father would kill me. Forget about it. I can't even go near there. I just found it fascinating. It's a piece of art. It has thought to it. It has expression to it. It has meaning to it. Or well, why hide it away? To be flamboyant is like a tool <laughs> of a entertainer. A, it's necessary to do it. It's, it's one of the tricks of the trade and, and go for it. <laughs> He's proud of me, I'm proud of him. It was like having mom pre-erotic art museum and a second mom post-erotic art museum. Now that she's broadened her horizons into the art world, and even beyond that, the erotic art world, um, it keeps her young. And, uh, and we can talk and hang out as friends. My father was one of the most remarkable human beings that ever walked the face of the earth. After surviving the Holocaust and having lost 59 of his relatives, he came to America, barely spoke English. He actually made his first $50 in America shoveling snow in what was the biggest blizzard in the history of New York and then worked in a Brooklyn sweatshop at night. And every business he went into, he doubled the sales, tripled the sales, quadrupled the sales. He took money, invested it in the stock market, but he took over an oil company, Wilshire Oil Company of Texas on the New York Stock Exchange. And then to top it off, he uses the oil company to take over a bank. He didn't go to Princeton, he didn't go to Yale, he didn't go to Harvard. He went to Auschwitz and never finished junior high school. His father missed a great portion of life as we know it here in America since he was a uh, Holocaust survivor. He was taken into forced labor and then into the camps. And uh, then when he finally came to America, he was driven for survival, driven to replace the family, driven to accomplish things in life. So he didn't have much time for frivolity. Uh, he was very exacting. and. Uh, Working uh, six days a week, he would have worked seven days a week, except that he obs we observed the Sabbath. And he worked from morning till night to achieve, and he felt that one had to do something and accomplish. So he was uh, a little bit at odds with Ivan and his wanting to be in show business. Uh, he didn't think that was a fitting enough future for, for his son. One day he told me, oh, I wish my father let me become a singer. Oh, I wish I became a singer. Oh, I wish I became a singer. He was, keep repeating that line. So I told him, so do it now. By the time I decided to enter the entertainment world, thanks to my father and the fortune he created in the bank, I was, I was good to go. Anything I wanted to do, I could afford to do at that point in time. I started off in the dance music community. I found that the club scene and the rave scene was like the equivalent of today's hippies. You had people dancing and having fun, no matter what their difference is. And I just felt that that rave generation was the answer. My father had cancer 
when his nurse said to him, Mr. Wilzig, you should be very proud of your son. He's in Billboard. My father said, what's Billboard? When she said, Mr. Wilzig, Billboard is to the entertainment business what the Wall Street Journal is to the banking business. He said, ah, Mazel Tov, had really made it. At the age of 45, my first single, Imagine, had made the Billboard charts, which inspired me to create Peace on Earth. My father passes away, and then a year later, the bank is sold. Then I don't have to worry. If something appears in a, in a newspaper about my partying lifestyle, or whether I'm, uh, or whether I'm at an audition for something, or, wear, or whether I'm wearing a cape, it's no longer an embarrassment to him, the board of directors, the customers, the officers of a bank which is supposed to be conservative. And I ain't conservative. <laughs> My brother and I decided we were going to build a dream house that would have everything we could possibly want and leave nothing out. I decided, since I had never seen one in the Hamptons, that our house that it would have to be a medieval fortress. I got 450 bunny ears, just in case it becomes a mob scene. Somewhere camp. Here. <laughs> Stick that and you're behind. <laughs> what? <laughs> 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 These are uh, the three main varieties that people will have to choose from. Yeah, everyone's gonna talk about. Already people are talking about. Kira, what do you think? <laughs> you like it? You like it? Yes? Yes? How much you like it? Show me how much. I think he likes the way I am and he doesn't really require me to be like uh, sexy, but I like to be sexy and he loves it, so it's great. <laughs> He's like a soulmate, so yeah, I will love him forever. We don't have to worry about the labels. She knows I'm looking out for her and she's looking out for me. In that sense, we're soulmates and best friends. Can you take the position, please? Please. I am having a one-of-a-kind sculpture made by a very famous artist who was great making nude sculptures and also great making reptiles and dinosaurs. So it's very rare that I found one that's an expert in both. This is like instant bathing suit. Okay, last all up being applied. <laughs> like making cake. Icing on the cake, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Mina meets the dragon. Dragon goddess, the new sculpture that's going to center in the pool, will be a beautiful nude Mina morphing into a dragon. So she'll be half beautiful naked woman and half dragon. She's going to be the center of the pool for as long as I have this castle. So it's a slow process. So we'll, we'll have a few um, sittings with you on this. The head is being foamed up, and we're going to carve that to approximate the design that we have for Mina's elongated uh, head, to which we're going to be adding spikes to eventually. Um, and then over that, we're going to put the clay on, and then all the detail. Where are the bagels from? Downstairs, there's a uh, deli just downstairs in the Portofino. No, I know the deli. Know we that. all had a guilt trip laid on us by my husband and their father because of his experience in the camps. We certainly weren't responsible for what happened to him, but uh, um, he used it as a defense to get his own way. Eat while it's fresh. So, yeah, no, it was, uh, Ivan it was knuckled under, so to say, and he finished college, he finished law school, and he went to work in the bank, but he never loved the law. And in the banking, he wasn't crazy that crazy about finance either, even though he had some very good ideas. I remember when you, oh had, the be God. you had the beads in your hair. I think your father wanted to personally assassinate you. You know what you. I did. You weren't there. I didn't even yeah, know yeah. you then. I know. I go to the Bahamas. You told me. You told I'm me. sitting there on the beach for yeah, five yeah. hours, and I have a. Uh, a Bahama mama sitting there braiding my hair. My hair was white wasn't beads with white beads. White and silver beads. 
I didn't sit for five hours to have to go back to the bank on Monday and take it all out before I get to show them my friends in the, in the clubs. Uh -huh. So I figured I'm gonna take it into the bank and for as many days as I can avoid father, I'll avoid him. If he don't call me, I'm not calling him. On Wednesday, he's got some wealthy father and son in there. I said, okay, I'm coming. Now I'm thinking to myself, I'm walking, I'm yeah, walking yeah. to the boardroom. And I walk like this, very straight, walking straight. And I go, hello, Mr. Oh, oh, Mr. Stein, how are you? And this is my son, hello, 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 Joe Stein, it's your son, very nice to meet you. And my father's going, oh yeah, these guys are big in te 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 uh, textiles and they're opening a new factory and a manufacturing plant and we're gonna lend them a, give them a line of credit and do finance all their business and be there and handle their banking needs. I said, okay, great, thank you very much. Great to meet you. Went down like this, and I backed, and I backed yeah. out like this. I backed out, thank you very much. I backed out 30 feet, I walked out of the boardroom backwards so that nobody could see. Yeah the back of my head because I thought father would have a heart attack and like yeah, and you can shake your head and, and, and I'd be finished this memorial is to the Holocaust the fact that a million and a half children were also murdered uh, including a million under the age of 12 which made the tragedy even worse and the worst evil in the history of mankind. My father was one of the few. He was the only survivor out of a, a junior high school of 1,500 Jewish children to survive the Holocaust. People would say, where's your father from? I would say, he was in Auschwitz during the war in Poland, but he was a German Jew, and they couldn't believe it because 90% of the German Jews were exterminated by Hitler. Consequently, it was something that he always uh, told his, his customers at the bank, told his colleagues on the board, uh, it didn't really matter, Jew or Gentile, he really wanted to let them know what really happened, since there are actually people out there that, that deny it happened. They did selections, women over here, men over here, children here. So his mother was sent straight to the gas chambers. His father managed to stay alive for a few months, but was beaten to death after doing forced labor in the camp. And my father had to identify his dead father out of a pile of corpses. Altogether, I lost 59 relatives. I never had grandparents on that side, lost uncles, aunts, nieces, nephews, 59 altogether. So as a result of that, uh, our, our nuclear family, in other words, my father, my mother, and the three children were abnormally close and exceptionally close, and that's why I wound up working for my father for 20 years in the bank, because he wanted to see his children uh, on a daily basis. And it became very important for him uh, to, to see that the Jewish people survived because after losing six million, it was his dream that all his children would wind up marrying Jews to uh, mainly to replenish the Jewish children that were, that were butchered and murdered. And he felt that was the only way to bring the people back to life. Please bring the back. The driver drives 15 hours from South Beach to to, to, uh, to Atlanta and leave, then leaves all my capes in the house. He asked me, where's the capes? I said, oh my God, so I, I left everything in the hotel. So he was very nervous, was very upset. I only got X amount of hours in the studio. Well, maybe they can shoot something else. They can shoot his execution. Uh, I know he's a very, very hyper person, but he's a good person to work with. He's a good boss, and I like him a lot. And uh, it never stops. Quickly, quickly, fast, fast. We have the capes. Great. There's a smile, got there's a smile. There you go. Everybody's running on very little sleep right now. And uh, it's amazing, the only thing that was forgotten was the capes. The Eastern world, it is exploding. Violence flaring, bullets loading. You're old enough to kill, but not for voting. You don't believe in war. But what's that gun you're toting? And even the Jordan River has bodies floating. But you tell me over and over. Ivan's music is a very modern electronica version of some of the older 60s classics. 
When I first met him, he was absolutely insane, and I, I realized uh, right then that we would get along great. Him, he's just a really good-hearted person, yeah, very eccentric, very, uh, very difficult at times, but the end result is a phenomenal project. Ford is an absolute musical genius. He has an ear and an ability to make you dance, to make you cry, to make you, uh, to inspire you. Everything that music should do. Before I met him, he won 18 gold and platinum records. Yeah, my blood's so mad, feels like a wagulating. I'm sitting here just contemplating. I can't twist the truth, it knows no regulation. And handful of senators don't pass legislation. March is alone, can't bring integration. When human respect is disintegrating, but you tell me. The castle is going to be the place for, the, for that charity that's nearest and dearest to me, which is my own, the Peace Man Foundation. No one can live forever, and that's what I want to leave. I want to leave the Peace Man Foundation, whose mission purpose is to battle hate crimes and to treat post-traumatic stress disorder, which is often affiliated as a result of a brutal hate crime. When I first started dating Mina, she worked at Fuji Bank in the World Trade Center. 33 members of her firm died in September 11. I took an elevator to 78th floor and I dropped this pen. It became kind of a lifesaver. It's from a trust company bank Ivan's father used to own. I picked up this pen and I saw the window by the elevator and I saw smoke. I knew there was a, I don't know if I can talk about this. Uh, I saw the fire, and I knew uh, I should get up from there. And while I was going downstairs, a uh, second plane hit. Well, some people went upstairs, and they died. But I kept running downstairs, so I survived. I kept running, running, running to Ivan's apartment. Having survived it, she has to live with that tragedy for the rest of her life and deal with the emotional consequences from it. My father was traumatized by the Nazis and suffered from post-traumatic stress disorder. And my girlfriend, Mina, was a victim of a hate crime. There was even some post-traumatic stress disorder involving her. So as a private foundation, what I do is raise the money who people who want to support my cause, and then I dole out the money to various charities that are actually doing things proactively to battle hate crimes. He is wearing his, his mission, his mantra, something he truly believes in. You know, figuratively you'd say he's wearing it on his sleeve. In his case, he's wearing it on his back. The purpose of wearing the cape is for two things. Make him smile off the bat, and to ask the question, why is he dressed like that? And the answer is, not because I forgot what day Halloween is, it's because I'm drawing attention to the symbol. And when they see me in the cape, you see smiles, you see people's <laughs> eyes light up. I know that there's, a, that there's a method to my madness. It's not something to be made fun of, but something to understand and appreciate the differences in life. He's been has gone on a couple missions. I went up to Harlem to help a, a school that was distressed. I came here to make sure this school and other schools like this continue. So, that to, so you can get more teachers, better books, more, you know, whatever you need. So you gotta ask your question. Yeah, sure. You look like a movie star. A movie star? Oh, if you weren't so young, I would consider that a great compliment. I enjoyed being here very much. You're a great man. Another time I went down into downtown Manhattan and on Thanksgiving tried to feed as many homeless people as I could. Just carved off the bird. Let me put something down. Man. Just carved off the bird, man. How many can I take? You can take at least two. You got a stove in there? I got sterno, I got everything. All right. I got an electric pot. <laughs> I plug it in the pole. Yeah, I'm serious. I believe you.
Yeah, so we're celebrating Thanksgiving early this week. Thanks, All right. Long live peace, man. Peace, man. You, yourself, as well as your family have always been about giving back to the community. I mean, just one of the, the other day I was driving out of the Holland Tunnel onto the Jersey Turnpike and I saw the Wilzig Hospital. My family made a major contribution to the building of that hospital. And that hospital, except any and all who come through the doors, it doesn't matter whether you're rich or poor, it's a hospital that symbolically is perfect because my father ran the bank with heart. You're giving back, not only through hospitals, not only through the Peace Man Foundation, not through your music as well. I, I just wanted it my, my whole life to have, a, I had a lot of catching up to do. I had a lot of uh, creative energy that I couldn't use in the bank. And I, I wanted to focus and do something uh, on, a, on a global humanitarian level. Shooting uh, my second music video. Today is the green screen part so that they can put me in different backgrounds. My makeup man, he knows I provide the comic relief on the set. Yeah, I gotta have it. If he's not hollering, I'm not happy. Yeah. <laughs> Carlos doesn't know the difference between an Afro-American and an African. I have to teach him. He thinks, the guy, the guy is black, and, and I have to teach him the difference between an Afro-American and a real African. He said smoky at that. Like, huh? you should know. About an hour ago, my director, Carlos, called to tell me that his mother stopped breathing and she died. Thanks, I need a hug. <laughs> right now, I'm kind of at a mix of emotions because I was so ready to do this video today and I was so ready to work with you guys. But then that happens and it's like the worst possible, lowest of the low thing that could happen to me. So um, it hasn't really set in yet. So I'm still gonna be coherent enough to really you know, kind of put you guys in a good direction today. <laughs> Money, come here, come here, you're African, come here. What do you think? It's pretty cool, right? Wow. <laughs> nice, good? yes. Nice. Very good, Very nice. yeah. That's the look I wanted. You're only seeing it off her body. You're not seeing the fire off anybody. No, we're seeing it off little her little body. Little in my face. But to me, it looks it, like a strobe it, light, not like a fire. Peace, man. You're supposed to be peace, so... I am. Okay. I am. I've been up since 7 a.m., and it's now 2 a.m. He just doesn't run out of energy. I don't know how he does it. Look who drove here all the way from Africa. <laughs> How are you? Hi. How are you? Good energy for today. Yeah. I've never seen an uglier beach in my life. If we had shot on time, we'd be over there where there's sand instead of a pile of horse manure. It looks like a dumping ground for every horse in the state of Florida. Carlos followed a storyline that I came up with to make love, not war. But in it, I was trying to address specifically African genocide taking place in Darfur. And then once I start to sing the very spiritual song, they come to their senses, drop their weapons, and go from killing each other to dancing with each other. And the next time I sing, they go from dancing with each other to the two tribes making love to each other. To the best of my knowledge, I've been on various television shows in every continent in the world. The repeated television shows in both France and Germany have made me almost a household name there. I've been waiting years. On a recent trip to Paris, I couldn't go anywhere without somebody stopping to wave or say hello to Peace Man. It was unbelievable. Every time I've been on television, any country in the world, I'm swamped with hundreds and hundreds of Facebook requests. People want to connect with me somehow, some way. 
with viral marketing, you can become a star sitting at your computer desk. There was hundreds of thousands of views on these videos. You know, that makes them a star. A normal person like you and I, we upload videos on the internet, we're not gonna get hundreds of thousands of views on it. I was able today to have my New York computer expert speak to my Miami expert. We were able to see who, on a global level, from country to country, is downloading the videos and chatting online and blogging, etc. Hey, Sir Ivan, we've been tracking the amount of plays of your video on the internet, and the numbers are really huge. Your Castle Stock party footage is the fourth most viewed video in Yahoo video history, and the fifth most viewed video in Yahoo history is actually your Kumbaya video. Your videos are most popular in the United States, and then it breaks off into Europe. Number one is Germany, number two is the United Kingdom, number three is Sweden, and number four is France. And your cumulative results for the Kumbaya video on the top tier sites on the net, 11,410,250 views. When I see the video responses in the millions, I'm absolutely thrilled and inspired. It just shows that there is support of what I'm doing and the way I'm doing it. And that was just in December. That was <laughs> from October to December, yeah. How do you like that? That's good. Wow. You knew already, huh? What's going on? You wanna go out? You wanna go daddy? What are you doing? You're pretty excited. Uh, we're gonna do a runway show. She's doing what they said. She's taking a shit already. Okay, it's better to do it to your end. <laughs> I take her to a party and she takes a shit. Who's got a paper towel? Who's got a paper <laughs> tissue here? She's not used to the red carpet. Just like Madonna. Chiquita. Chiquita, just like Madonna's chihuahuas with Miss Chiquita. How cute are you? How old is she? Oh. Oh. <laughs> She's very cute. She's a man eater. Sir Ivan. She was like the most beautiful ever. I never worry about any girlfriend breaking up with me because me, they can leave. They can never leave the dog. I think I want to uh, come work for me. <laughs> My nephew, Jonathan, he, uh, he enjoys going to raves. We go to the Ultra Festival during the Winter Music Conference together. Um, he knows about my free-spirited lifestyle. So you're graduating in May, right? Yeah, May 17th. He's come to visit me at the castle several times. And Jonathan, you know, he likes Uncle Ivan's lifestyle a lot. Perfect. So I will be at your graduation. Nice. Awesome. And uh, what are you going to do when you're done? Uh, I don't really have a job lined up yet. I might, uh, I might do some charity work after I graduate. Really? You're going to come work for the Peace Man Foundation? <laughs> of course. That's good. If you, I, uh, you raise a lot of money, who knows you could be the next Peace Man. Uh, I'll, I'll submit my resume. Yeah. No, you have to try on some capes first to make sure you look good. <laughs> it's a job requirement that you look good in every color cape. Well, you in the past, my mother and my father used to hide his lifestyle from me for obvious reasons, but as I got older, clearly I was able to hang out with him more myself. And when you're with Ivan, it's always going to be, you know, one of the craziest times you've ever had. It's always going to be one of the best nightclubs you've ever been to in your life. Even just having a dinner with the family and Ivan, you know, there's always some extremely fun element to it. Almost every girl in the world is brought up by their mother in a fairy tale life of you're going to meet your Prince Charming. He may come, in a, he may come on a horse or he may come in a Ferrari, but uh, either way, uh, the man of your dreams uh, will, will sweep you off your feet and you'll live happily ever after in the castle. The castle is a lot of beautiful girls. They play in the pool naked. They, they walk in the, in the, inside the house uh, naked. A lot of beautiful girls naked. Unbelievable. One time, I get up in his apartment by himself, and then went to the one club. When they get up, the four beautiful girls. Everybody's in the limo, talking, dancing, listening to music. Women and I have gotten along famously since, I guess I'd have to say five years old. I'm not in a contest with myself or anybody else. So it changes. Maybe one month I'm dating one girl. Maybe one month I'm dating five girls. So even every time when he go out, it's the only beautiful girls around him. So when I park the limo, I say, oh, so Ivan, the girls go around him, go talk to him. He has something special. He's a, he's a blessed guy. There are certain playboys that are trying to uh, make up for something. That's not the case with Ivan at all. He was always popular with girls. He was always handsome and always uh, super intelligent and funny like hell. 
He's a party animal. <laughs> I guess he gets bored easily. He always wants a, a new romance, a new love, uh, a new companion. Uh, I, I keep telling him it's time to settle down. I said, you don't realize it now, but later you're going to be lonely. You're going to want a companion. He says, don't worry, I'll find a companion. He's a gourmand more than a gourmet. You can often look and say that any guy that's a playboy doesn't have a respect for women. That's not really a true statement. You can just have respect for one woman after another. He sings about peace and love, and he lives a lifestyle of peace and love. We have fun. I mean, we don't get jealous. Because someone said you have to love one person, doesn't mean I have to be that way. I believe when you love someone, to truly love someone, you let them free. And free as a bird is how I always want my girlfriend or lover to be. And I want her to give me the same freedom to do things that make me happy. And like, uh, what's his name? Uh, Mel Brooks said, it's good to be the king. You call him, of all my three children, Mr. Personality. I've been throwing the best parties on the planet for years. People fly in all over the world to come to my parties. The parties are insane. Topless women everywhere. I even would say, oh, you're going to have 15 people over for dinner that night, and suddenly there's 75, 80 people there, and that just kept on going all night long. Once you've seen 10 naked people in a swimming pool paired off going at it 150 times through your bedroom window, um, which is usually something you can see quite clearly if the lights are on in the swimming pool, um, you sort of become inure to that. So to pick the wildest, when that was going on practically every single weekend um, for 14 weekends in a row for 10 years straight, which of those 140 times was wilder than the other? Damn, you got me. It's indisputably the wildest house in the Hamptons. Uh, not like this. Thank you. <laughs> oh my God! What a, look what they did! Yeah. Oh my God! That's the kinkiest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> he understands us. <laughs> go, go, go already! Oh, I'm almost. <laughs> Wait for me. I am the flying bunny from hell. You better not mess with me in the dungeon. And she's the flying bunny from heaven. She's the good one, the innocent one, and I'm the very bad one. The unique part of my relationship with Mina comes from the fact that we both are free spirits. Like flower children from the 60s, making love not woke is taken seriously. The music's great, and there's gorgeous naked women everywhere. Go ahead already. <laughs> and that spirit of love is shared by us and our friends and like-minded individuals and everything is consensual and everything is beautiful, very loving and, and a shared experience. Sometimes, you know, all of us together, I bring me, other girls together and we have fun together. My brother and I shared the castle, and only after he got married and had two children, you know, his lifestyle and my lifestyle were radically different. As soon as we had baby number one, Ivan just said, um, you gotta get out. And, and, uh, and I was like, that's a little harsh, you know? You're not even gonna know the babies here. And he goes, no, no, no. Once you have a baby, you're gonna have friends with babies, you're gonna have a nanny, your friends are gonna come with their nannies. The whole vibe is, gonna, is, not, is not what I wanted to have the castle for. He bought 300 acres off the Hudson River where he can pursue his passion, which is collecting and designing and racing motorcycles and race cars. I got my first motorcycle when I was 24. 
I have 100 bikes in total. The heart and soul of the collection is 70 motorcycles. It's a lot of Ducatis and, and Moto Guzzi's and, and Aprilia's and Benelli's. I'm in heaven when I'm here. I'm into my children and my family, and I've always been into work. My fanatical collecting is directly attributable to my mother with her museum. We're all pursuing our passions with an equal zeal, and, and that's one of the ties that binds us all together. As you see, the scribe is now completing the Torah by putting together the two parchments, which makes the Torah from being a Torah that's not kosher to a Torah that's kosher, that you can use, that we can read from, we can make a blessing on, which is one of the great significances of today. My mother decided to donate a Torah to the local synagogue because they didn't have one, and she supports the Jewish community she lives in. I was brought up more religious than my upper middle class neighbors and friends. I went to an Orthodox Jewish Hebrew school, celebrated all the Jewish holidays, and that was considered very religious. My music, the charity, and what I do comes more from a, a belief in good than God. Doing good for others is, to me, the Holy Land. Sir Ivan, a lot of the stuff that you, you've done on this album here has that thumping and that energy to it, and it makes you feel, it's feel-good music with a message. I mean, the last time we saw you was live on stage in front of 130,000 people at the Party 105 Mega Jam. So what has been going on with Sir Ivan since then? What have you been up to? Uh, a lot. <laughs> I've been a busy boy. I just completed my first full-length album. I took everything to another level because now I perform with a live band. It means more rehearsals and it's like a team effort. So it's great to work with Ford who leads the band and got all these great musicians together. That album is to bring you back to the songs of protest against war, to the songs of civil rights, human rights, gay rights, women's rights. You know, the 60s is when the, the first time, the only time that the planet all together created a revolution. This is track number nine off the I Am Peace Man album by Sir Ivan. This one is called Live For Today on Party 105. Chasing after money and dreams that can't come true I'm glad that we are different, we better things to do May others plan their future, I'm busy loving you My work hey, is performing, inspiring others, carrying on that peace message and raising money for charity. Many people choose to say, oh, he's a rock and roll guy? Then he's not to be respected because with him it's probably all about sex, drugs, and rock and roll. One can enjoy those things and still give to charity, be very spiritual, have a productive and meaningful purpose and goal in life. Yeah, how many 250s, how many 500s? and how many press. And also, are we up to four buses or five buses of press now? You're watching The Juice on Plum TV. I'm Nick Layton. And I'm Jennifer Friel. I'm Robin Moreno. And I'm Lorna Zorski. And we are at the castle. 
Oyster Island's castle. It's very famous. Oh, and what is it famous for? Wild parties. Anything or goes. Anything that's wild. Time. And he's having a party this weekend. Uh, it's called Castle Stock. Like Woodstock. Kind of like Woodstock. Well, you know, Sir Ivan is actually a musician. He's a singer as well. Yeah. Really? He had a top 40 hit back like top in... Top 40? Yeah, like in September. I, I know all this, All right, well, let's take a little listen. All right, let's groove. I told I mean, I, when I told the guy I wanted to be able to blacklight Shea Stadium, I think he took me literally. This party is the launching of my own charitable foundation, the Peace Man Foundation. And I want to bring it all together, the music, the good cause, the hippie spirit and desire for everyone to have a good time and then pass that good energy on to others and maybe be inspired to help others. Tonight has never been attempted before in party history. I'm black lighting a 15,000 square foot castle to raise money for peace and the Peace Man Foundation to battle hate crimes and treat those that suffer from PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. The joy in me throwing parties is not just because I have a good time at the party and it's all about me. On the contrary, it's to hear back from people to tell me the most fun I ever had in my life was at the castle. to be conservative to do good in the world. You don't have to be just like everybody else. It's the variety in life that makes life the most beautiful. It's up to the individual. As long as things are consensual and loving, it is not up for other people to decide what is right or wrong. are amazing. They're, they're uh, Alice in Wonderland come, come to life. I think what Ivan believes is beautiful. I mean, his whole message of peace and love is that everyone should really just be free, have fun, and enjoy life, and not worry about, you know, the ideals and notions that society has placed on us. And I think he's always kind of followed his dream of doing what you believe in. He's not going to change the world with partying, per se. He's going to change the world with his Peace Man Foundation. He's going to change the world with his songs about peace. The partying is a backup to his personality. If I'm passionate enough and convincing enough that others should join in and see the world a different way and treat others a different way, then change will take place. And it may not be immediate, it may not be overnight, it may take years, but I'm planting the seeds, and those seeds hopefully will grow in a positive way. Kumbaya.
Yeah. 